People have told me that they are not really concerned about all this. What they're concerned about now is merely surviving. And I can understand that. I, empathi I, I empath empathize with that. Lots of people, myself included perhaps, we are just trying to survive. But let's think about this. In trying to survive, if we allow the same thing to happen over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome, how do you expect to survive? You have to change. You have to be an agent of this change. You have to think. Now this government today has the opportunity to think. But like I said from the beginning, I, I don't have that much optimism when it comes to this government changing because all the players are still the same. The ideology has not changed. We still have this racist ideology which should not be there, especially when you're talking about defending Islam. In reality, you don't need to defend Islam. That is only Allah's prerogative. Secondly, you are talking about one individual group over another. You should not do that. We are all human beings. We are all people. This virus doesn't think about that. This virus doesn't think that, oh, I'll infect a certain sector but not the others. It doesn't see those kind of things. Why are we then limiting our capacity based on a very narrow idea of who we are? We are not all in this together. Big business is happily making money. Everybody else is losing money. The rich are becoming richer. The poor are becoming poorer. We are not in this together. The banks are happily making money. Even though they have a moratorium, they are still happily making money. Big business, pharmacies are making a lot of money. Um, hospitals, now they are privatized. They are all making money. Who are the ones not making money? The ordinary person. The ordinary person, the you and me. These are the people who are not profiting at all. On the contrary, they are losing. The small entrepreneurs, these are the ones who are suffering the most. Small business entrepreneurs, people who try to make their own restaurants, people who try to make their own uh, fashion lines perhaps, people who try to do their own form of business, they are the ones losing out the most. They work so hard, they try to establish places in shopping malls, and yet the shopping malls are charging a very exorbitant rent. At the same time, the government puts all these so-called SOPs which completely ruin their businesses. But what about the big ones? What about the big names? The big fast food industry, for instance, the big names, they don't suffer that much because they are part of a big chain. What about the cottage industries, the ones who are the mother and father, mom and pop shops, the ones who try to open their own restaurants? They suffer. They can't get good staff. They can't get customers in because of the restrictions. They can't do anything. This is not good. Why don't we try to help them, the entrepreneurs? They are the ones suffering the most. Therefore, we are not all in this together. If we were, they would help the entrepreneurs. They wouldn't be out of business. There wouldn't be so many unemployed. There wouldn't be so many bankrupt. So it's not just this virus that's causing this problem for us. The virus is a big factor, but it is the leadership, how we have taken, we haven't taken control, but how we have tried to, to overcome this problem. That is our problem because we haven't done it correctly. We have not listened to those people who actually have made sense in what they say. We don't listen to, we ignore them. On the contrary, when it comes to the Muslims especially, if you want to criticize, there'll be some group or organization that says you can't criticize because by criticizing, what it means is you're criticizing the younger Dipartuan Agong because he is the head of the religion. What is wrong with that? Are you telling me that in, in the Muslim civilization or in Islam you cannot criticize? Even if it's the young Dipartuan Agong? Of course you can. Who do you think you are? Oh, you think you are the Ulul Amr because you'll go to the Quran and you say, look, the Quran instructs you to obey the Ulul Amr and the Ulul Amr themselves are not the ones now in politics. But that's how they interpret it. The politicians now are saying that the government is the Ulul Amr and they get the so-called ulama to come and tell them, yes, it's true, you are the Ulul Amr. You are not the Ulul Amr. An ignoramus is not part of an Ulul Amr. An arrogant man is not part of an Ulul Amr. 
all of which we have in government today. You refuse to listen to good advice. When you try to give them good advice, it's impossible to see them because they never and never, uh, uh, what do you call it, keep fulfill their promise when they are going to meet. They'll give you some vague notion. Yeah, 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 don't worry, we'll meet. Don't worry, don't worry, I'll get back to you. Whenever you hear that word, I'll get back to you from somebody in government, it never happens. It means you'll never see them again. That's the way this government is. I don't know about this government now, I mean, talking about the previous one, but this government, because it is the same people, I suspect that it won't be much different unless they get the right people to advise them. They used to have, uh, in, the, in the previous government, I don't know whether they still have it now, they used to have an advisory body made up of doctors and virologists, or I don't know whether there were any virologists in it, for this Majlis Kusramata Nagara. And they were all advising one thing. But there are other doctors. Don't tell me these other doctors are less qualified. They are more qualified sometimes. These are more virologists. These are more the doctors who are in practice, who are treating people on a daily basis. They are saying something else. Why are you not listening to them too? Why can't you listen to both sides? You are not because you are only concerned about yourselves, your position. It's quite obvious. That's what you have been doing all along. <clears throat> and people are fed up. So now if people tell me we are not interested, we're just trying to survive, think about this. Your survival depends on how this government and this country is being run. And if it is being run poorly, you are not going to survive. There are going to be more people who are leaving this country. The, the, the brains of this country are going to leave. We know this is going to happen. It's already happening. They've become so fed up, so disenfranchised, so angry that they've just decided to up and leave. They don't want to have anything to do with this country anymore. And that is sad. That's very sad. This is the country of their birth. Doesn't matter whether they are Malay, Indian, Chinese, Sikh, whatever. This is the country of their birth. They have an equal right to see this country become prosperous. They also have a right to make themselves prosperous as well. Why is it that we don't emphasize these kind of things? Instead, everything has become politicized. The vaccine has become politicized. The vaccination program has become politicized. Everything. The economy has become politicized. The, the, the medical healthcare has become politicized and privatized. And that's a bad thing in my opinion. On the one hand, you have private hospitals, which is not bad in itself. But the amount of fees that they charge, exorbitant fees for better health care. Why can't you have that in the government hospitals? Because the government hospitals don't have that standard of health care like the private hospitals have. Why? Because they don't put any money into it. Where does all the money go? Where does all the money go? It goes for political purposes. It goes into someone's coffer, not yours. That is unjust. There is no justice in that sense. And here we are, sitting in this beautiful country, with this beautiful people. And yet, we have a certain segment, a minority in reality, who controls everything. How is that possible? How is it possible that the evil minority control everything? That is unjust. And here we are talking about justice, trying to define justice, trying to show justice, and yet there is none. So it's not surprising that people don't still, still don't understand. It's not surprising at all. I know this has been a rather long video, but it's just something that I've got to get off my chest because I've been thinking about this for months since we have this lockdown. And it's, it's still not, I haven't regurgitated all of it. Maybe I can, I can reserve that for another video in the, in the future, inshallah.